All right, what's going on, everybody? I'm back with another video. This is going to be the third video for Police Quest in Pursuit of the Death Angel. This is the VGA remake of Police Quest 1. came out in 1992. So we're going to head over to the Blue Room. Go hang out with Jack Cobb that is, uh, for his birthday. Pretty much the same setup. This is Sporty Camaro, Envy of the Department. <laughs> and it's all the same, same stuff. Should be the same. Yeah. I'm not reading it really because it is the same. A little bit different right here on the dash. The heater AC vents rarely used in Litton's balmy, comfortable climate. The heater AC controls, it's probably been weeks since you used them. Camaro's radio currently off. The Litton radio stations are the pits. The Camaro's tachometer. The Camaro's speedometer. Clock, fuel tank, and other smaller gauges give you the satisfying feel of being in the cockpit of a jumbo jet. The ignition for your Camaro. This is the steering wheel of your sporty Camaro. Your left and right turn signals. The Camaro has a defroster, which you probably use a half a dozen times each winter. The Camaro's lighter, you never use it. Being a cop is your only life-threatening habit. The glove compartment of your Camaro, no gloves in there, of course, just a lot of old maps and a few packs of moist towelettes. The dashboard swank curves are satisfyingly aerodynamic. And that's the 90s right there. I wonder if this, if this is what it looks like. I've been in one of these, I think, but it's been years, and I just don't remember. But this, this definitely, that's a Chevy thing right there, having the two vents in the middle. I mean, they did that with the old Corvettes, even back in the 70s. Maybe the Camaros, too, I don't know. But... I'll have to take a look at one sometime and see. Turn right. Blue room's right here. Yeah, looks good. If they if they did follow it, then that's awesome. If they made it accurate to what the Camaro looks like. Turn left. Outside the Blue Room, a popular hangout for cops. The sign for the Blue Room was hand-painted by the owner's daughter. This tree was donated by the Lytton Police Force to the town of Lytton three years ago. The Blue Room, the blue room is nestled between many charming little shops. Uh, it's one of those big umbrellas that leaks in the rain, cracks in the sun, and blows over in the slightest breeze. It's a bench. Charming white plastic lawn furniture. You admire the wooden decking, trying not to notice the ancient chunks of food stuck between the planks. The sign says, Soup of the Day, Mold or Sue. Stew. Right? Yeah. An attractive fern hangs outside the blue room door. The flowers smell wonderful, don't they? It's a rock. It's the parking lot. Don't take the sign. It's useful right where it is. Good for you. Everyone should hug a tree from time to time. <laughs> you can go shopping some other time, Bonds. Don't get too close, Bonds. That little piece of Americana could drop on you like a collection agent. Spotting the sediment of co cola and ketchup on the table, you withdraw your hand. Don't sit out here, Bonds. You're being antisocial. Leave the flowers alone. They get enough trouble from the neighborhood dogs. That's a little too big for your rock collection, Bonds. There's nothing on the ground that requires your attention. The ferns' leaves are light and airy. <laughs> That's about it. Oh, yeah. Don't do that. You'll get a splinter. Yeah. You go over here. That's cool. It's your sleek, sexy, personal auto. So how come you never have any babes with you? Right. Yeah, how come, Sonny? You see your friend Jack Cobb sitting at the table. You notice that he's been depressed and distracted for days. 
It's your old friend Jack Cobb. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's Bobby Gomez. He retired from the force a few years back when this fine establishment became available. He got out of police work and into something he felt was much safer, operating a bar. <laughs> the floor isn't relatively, is relatively clean for an establishment of this caliber. You're inside the Blue Room, a popular hangout for cops. The plant in the corner looks like it could use a stiff drink. It says, Mur Elub If. <clears throat> That's nice. It's a booth. On closer inspection, you discover the words Robin of Loxley was here, carved into the wood. Damn vandals. It's the universal symbol of masculinity, the bull cinch. Just looking at its wrought iron curves and angles makes your testosterone levels rise. It's an all-American crust velvet nude lady behind the bar painting. Across the bar, this bar has passed nearly an ocean of ales and other alcohol-laden attitude adjusters. Back there is where Bobby, your bartender, keeps all his deadly hangover generators. Bar stools made from the finest Corinthian naga hide. Over 15 nagas died to make these stools. <laughs> Don't worry about the plant bond. Someone else will water it. What were you thinking of doing? Walking off with it? You can't reach it, Bonds. Besides, you already picked up all the bad artwork you need at the starving artist sale at the local Happy Day Inn. You run your hand over the smooth surface of the wood. It comes away smelling like beer. Ah, the feel of vinyl. That won't do anything helpful. It's on the other side of the glass, Bonds. Don't grab Bobby. He's got a quick temper. Bobby will be happy to serve you. Don't touch that bar, Bonds. You don't know where it's been. Clarice. You're cute, Sonny, but if you do that again, I'll break your fingers. <laughs> Can't really talk to anybody. Bobby. Hi, Sonny. Nice to see you. Have a good one, Sonny. Have a seat, buddy. Functional chair is not as nice as the ones in Lieutenant Morgan's office, but they'll do. You give Jack a friendly pat on the shoulder. Okay, so we're going to go talk to Jack. You sit down with Jack. It's nice to have a few minutes to talk with him before the party, you think to yourself. Hey, Jack. Happy birthday, man. Huh? Oh, thanks, Tony. Jack, buddy, you look worried. Is something bothering you? Other than getting old, of course. No, no, nothing, Sonny. Think you're lying. You are suddenly certain that Jack is lying, and that scares you. Jack, you can tell me, man. Maybe I can help. I, Sonny, I think Kathy's on drugs. My little girl. I just can't believe it. Jack, are you sure? How do you know? I don't know for sure, but she's been so nasty for the past few months. Secretive. I know all teenagers are like that. But her grades are slipping. Oh, months. Secretive. She's being secretive. Sonny, she's been having nosebleeds all the time. She steals money from us. She was out all night last night, and I, I just... Oh, my God, my little girl. Sad and embarrassed, you give Jack a moment to gain his composure. This also allows you to gather your own thoughts. You're not very good with expressing yourself sometimes. Anyway, I don't know what to do. I try to talk to her, and she just screams at me and slams the door in my face. Sonny, we talked to her about sex, but we never talked to her about drugs. I'm a cop, for Christ's sakes. I didn't think I needed to. I didn't... Oh, God, Sonny. I don't know what to do. Oh, man, Jack, I... Keith, hey, 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 where's the birthday boy? There he is, Jack dude. Happy day. Hi, Keith, how's it going? Hi, Keith. You guys look like you're ready for a funeral. Cheer up, dudes. It's not the end of the world, Jack. Plenty of other guys have turned 87. <laughs> you should talk, Keith, my boy. I've seen you popping your dentures in the locker room when nobody's looking. Not me, dude. I'm a stud among muffins. You, on the other hand, are a little girly cop. Watch it, Keith. If Laura heard you saying that, she'd kick your butt sky high. Wow, the stone speaks. It's alive. Hey, hey, Bobby, put on the music quick. So Keith is Sonny's partner on Police Quest 2. Keith Robinson, he's your, he's his partner on the second game on uh, Police Quest 2, The Vengeance. So it's kind of cool. They still kept him in the game.
Kaylee. Happy birthday, Jack, baby. Yeah, Kaylee, baby, you're the best. Shake it one time for me, honey. See you later, boys. Almost looks like a French maid out outfit. <laughs> Hard to tell. Happy birthday, Jack. Huh? Oh, Clarice, thank you. Thank you, guys. This is great. You're a culinary angel, Clarice. Will you have my babies? No, honey, I have too much respect for the gene pool to do that. Ouch, you've been body slammed, Keith. What did she say? She said you were a stud of mom muffins, buddy. Ha ha ha, Sonny. Way funny. You know what else is funny? You agreed to swap shifts with me last week, remember? You're due in for briefing in ten minutes. Now that's funny. Oh, hell, I forgot. Listen, Jack, I got a cruise. If you need anything, give me a call, okay? Okay, Sonny, thanks. Oh, so Clarice, she came walking up with the cake, but she kind of glitched out, I guess. Sorry about that. Sure looks good. Too bad there was nobody to jump out of it. Okay, I'll switch back with you. Not. <laughs> you better run, Sonny. You better go, Sonny. You know how mad Dooley gets if you're late. You sneak a finger full of icing for the road. Face down on the floor is not a good position for an officer of the law to be in bonds. <laughs> Time to get out of here. Messenger 3810481 not found. That's funny. I remember that. I don't know what that means. Is it sturdy and reliable? It could use a wipe down though. Can I sit down again? No, oh, that's nice. I guess we better get out of here, right? We're going to be running a little late to briefing. <clears throat> Speed it up a little bit. So yeah, this is... Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned this. I don't think I did. <coughs> Excuse me, on the other uh, games. But this is the... First time... This is the first Police Quest game I ever played. Uh, it was probably in first grade. Kindergarten or first grade. And I remember, though. I think it was on DOS, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was before Windows that I played it, too. Jeez. It's amazing that they can keep these games running still. And God bless whoever was able to do all that. It's awesome. Uh, it's been so long, man. 1992. Jeez. <laughs> that's, that's a long time. I mean, damn near... This game is damn near 30 years old. In a couple of years, it's going to be 30 years old, right? Am I doing the math right? Oof. So we got a haul ass. Get to briefing. I don't know that we need a shower, but we'll go ahead and do it. It may tell us to go ahead and take a shower anyway for regulation purposes. Attention you trust your blue uniform. Yeah, okay, why not? You know, for street duds. Yeah, because, I mean, we were, we were only out for a little bit. We don't need a shower, right? Oh, wait. Can I put the key back? I don't know if I can or not. Oh, I can't. Okay. So I guess not. I'll just hold on to him then. Grab the radio, grab the keys. And we're late. Mons, take a seat. It's automatic that you're late, so don't worry. Let's see if they did anything. I guess not.
First off, thank you for taking time away from your usual afternoon debaucheries to come back to work. There's some late breaking news on that stolen Mercedes. A missing persons report was filed earlier in the day by the wife of a certain Jose Martinez. Hispanic male, 145 pounds, brown eyes, black hair. Or 145 pounds, right? It seems this gentleman was last seen two days ago getting into a fairly late model black Benz. No one has seen or heard from him since. Wait, it gets better. Martinez has an arrest record involving the sale of narcotics. Be careful, people. This car may have been the one involved in the murder of Lonnie West. Let's get moving on this one, boys and girls, before anyone else dies. Keep your heads down, keep your eyes open, and above all, watch your backs. Okay, let's move out. And hey, find me that Mercedes before its owner, Malcolm Washington, deep fries my ass. Let's go. Good music. Your hole is empty. Alright. Oh, there she is. Hi, Sonny. Did you fill out that request form yet? Morgan wants to make a decision soon. Right. Thank you for reminding me. And so at this point, you can't leave. You do have to do the request form, I think. Right. You better fill out one of those transfer forms soon. This opportunity is too good to miss. Not much room for advancement in a small town like Lytton. No, no, no. I don't, I don't feel like doing it. Yeah, so go ahead and fill out the memo. Summoning up your best grammar, you write a, you write a memo to Lieutenant Morgan requesting a transfer to narcotics. You've already submitted one transfer request, there's no point in filling out another. If you did, they'd probably transfer you back again. <laughs> right? So she wouldn't show up out of the elevator if uh, <clears throat> if you had filled it out at the beginning, the first time. You get the car a quick inspection, everything looks ready to go. That's what it said earlier before when I accidentally clicked out of it. We will save it here. Now we're looking for the stolen car, and we're just going to patrol. A332, we have a report of a domestic disturbance on the corner of Lily and First. Please investigate. Alright, so this is First. That's Lily. So it's going to be on the corner. Let's get up there.
protecting the area. 8332, you're requested to investigate the domestic disturbance at first in Lily. Please respond immediately. Thank you. Yeah. I'm doing that. So it would be this house, probably. Or a townhome. So we're going to go back around up this way. 8332, we have a sighting of a, on a stolen Mercedes proceeding eastbound on Oak Street. Vehicle is a silver Mercedes, possible stolen vehicle. Overtake and investigate. Thank you. Poppy, River Road, Rose, Peach. So we're going to go back up then, go north. I'm going to slow it down when we get close. We're going to turn left, go up to Oak. <coughs> Whoa, there he goes. There he is. Good work, Bonds. You've managed to intercept the stolen car. Hit the lights. The build building rush of adrenaline, you cautiously pace the stolen car, following it closely as it pulls over to the curb. So we're going to save it. The main save here. You have no idea who it could be from here, but he sure looks seedy. Look the suspect vehicle over from your vantage point, noting the license plate number, it, its make and color. You keep the mic and request wants and warrants on the Mercedes, and then anxiously await the response from dispatch. 8332, that plate is registered to a maroon 1989 Honda. We show that vehicle report is stolen three months prior in the city of Stilton. You think to yourself that something about this vehicle isn't kosher. It doesn't match the general description of a stolen vehicle mentioned in this morning's briefing. The color doesn't match, however. It does match the general description of the stolen vehicle. Okay. It's your very own patrol car. Hm. He certainly looks like the silver sort of Mercedes everyone has been talking about. Just another lit in city street. This one seems more badly kept than usual. <clears throat> you don't even want to think about what might be on the sidewalk in front of a place like this. There's an exceptional nasty dumpster filled with exceptionally nasty garbage. It's another one of those dark, narrow, dangerous alleys. The door is protected by a huge metal screen, but vandals have been at work anyway. The window is boarded and barred. Pieces of shattered glass litter the sidewalk. The building's exterior certainly shows where the profits are not going. One of the many businesses forced to close down by Lytton's crime problem. The Sin City sign is a monument to bad taste. Sin City, triple X rated. The ticket window for the Sin City Theater it gives new meaning to the term filthy lucre. The poster in it is an advertisement for Nagahai Goddesses of Oakhurst Part 7. The absolutely final chapter. No, seriously, we mean it this time. It's an ad for vixens with vestigial tails. Meet the subtly possum men from outer space. <clears throat> wow. It's the story of three young no nubile computer programmers, or nubile, nubile computer programmers with a thing for leather on their own in the big city. Will corruption, sleaze, and cheap hardware destroy them? Will they find true love? Will they get good jobs at a computer game company and live happily ever after? Or will they sink into the pit of arcade depravity? Six identical sisters from the bayou can never get dates because they have tails and whiskers. It looks like they'll live their lives alone with just their pet gators for company until a spaceship full of studly possum men show up. Yeah, it's wild possum passion in the savage swamp. Lash that tail, baby. Wow. It's an ad for Monaco Princess. Katie Nickelman. Nice. Instead of Nicole Kidman. Stars as a young princess who decides to take up race car driving and accidentally kills her mother in the process. She then falls under the sway of a handsome driver, Crom Trues, <laughs> instead of Tom Cruise, who gets her job after 
who gets her job after job in the race car industry, jobs she would never have gotten without its connections. It's an ad for the Lori rat goddess of the Hells Angels. Phil at the station told everyone about the plot of this flick. Her mother was bitten by a radioactive rat and tragically gave birth to Lori, half rat, half girl. She put up with the town's taunts and tormenting until the night they killed her brother with a giant mousetrap. Now she's joined the Hells Angels, men who appreciate a girl with furry legs, and Lori's gonna get even. This time it's personal. Wow. Alright, so we'll go ahead and call for backup. We already looked at the car. You don't find many, very many par cars parked illegally. You don't find very many cars illegally parked here. Most people are afraid to leave their cars alone in this neighborhood. Yell to the man in the car, but receive only a serious ringing in the ears as a response. So let's go ahead and call for backup. You nervously pick up your radio. This message is 8332 requesting backup code 3. Repeat, 1035 code 3. After a few long agonizing moments, dispatch replies. 8332, be advised that 8331 is responding code 3 to your location. And 1035 means backup requested. So we're going to hang tight here. Don't get out or anything. At last, Officer Jack Cobb arrives. You've never been so glad to see him in your life. 8332, this is 8331. I'll cover the passenger side while you make contact with the suspect. Be careful, Sonny. 8331 out. Eight, this passage is 8332. My 1020 is near the northwest corner of Oak and Brock. 8332 out. It's your trusty fellow officer, Jack. Jack's patrol car looks amazingly like yours. <laughs> shouldn't mess around with a, another cop's unit. You and Jack are buds, but you're not that close. Now it's not the time for idle chat with Jack. There's business to attend to. And now you're doing a felony stop, so you need to have that gun out. Your, you, you draw your service revolver. It's never felt so heavy in your hands before. Have you no moral fiber? Shocking, Sonny. It's shocking. <laughs> All right, so we'll focus on this. Please exit the vehicle with your hands raised. Repeat, please exit the vehicle with your hands raised. The suspect seems to be taking t some time to decide whether to follow your instructions. I repeat, exit the vehicle immediately with your hands in the air. Do it now. Halt. Make sure he stops. Don't let him just keep walking. Raise your hands over your head. The suspect hesitates for a moment, then seems to realize that he has no way out. You're still not sure exactly who this dirtbag is, but you know he's bad news. Hit the asphalt. Face to the pavement. Now. No fucking way, you bastard. That's probably what he said. I'm just guessing. I said hit the dirt. The suspect decides to listen to the voice of reason. Go ahead and move in, Sonny. I've got him covered. Don't move. Don't even breathe. You're in enough trouble right now as it is, sir, and I'd hate for you to say something that might be used against you in a court of law. All right, so what we want to do is what? We want to cuff him, right? You stand directly over the suspect. You can see he's shaking. You might do anything right now. You search the suspect, finding only some pocket change, a dried up stick of gum, and a Smith & Wesson 45 automatic. Nice pea shooter. On your feet, bud. Let's go, buddy, into the patrol car. I got your patrol, patrol car right here, you motherfucking pig. I beg your pardon? I'm going, I'm going. I'm just filling in the, the blanks. <laughs> well handled, Sonny. Give me that piece and I'll take care of booking it into evidence while you search the vehicle. You hand the gun to Jack. Let's make sure we read him his rights. You read the suspect as Miranda writes as he sulks in the back of the car. You sudden, you're suddenly shaking with relief and excitement. What a righteous bust. All right, Sonny. Excellent bust. No, awesome bust. Good thing you didn't forget his Miranda writes. Okay. This message is 8332. We'll be transporting to jail shortly. 8332 out. All right, so let's take a look. Did 
get a close look at the Mercedes door. Hmm, there seems to be black paint over the VIN number. He tries to paint away. The number is 603456218. It's the right card. That's the number we wrote down. 603456218. Yep, that's what I wrote down from the briefing. He already did that. Alright. So we confirm this the car. The trunk is locked. It won't budge. You didn't realize Mercedes were still made so solidly. So we can sit down on it. A button is concealed inside the glove box. So flipping through the book, you see many notes and entries. You decide to wait and examine it more thoroughly after it's been booked into evidence. You put it back in the glove box. There are no keys in the ignition. The suspect evidently hot-wired the car. PQ-176203 Marvin Hoffman, 331 West 104th Street, Chicago, Illinois. Sex male, hair black, eyes blue, height 6 foot, weight 194, date of birth 6261, restrictions none. SM-823491 Leroy Pearson, 11134 Beach Street, Newport, California. Sex male, hair black, eyes blue, height 6 foot, weight 196, date of birth 42860, restrictions none. You put the licenses back in the glove box to be impounded with the car. Okay, so we'll hit the button. You press the button and hear a muffled thud from behind you. Your heart leaps. You turn around only to discover that you've released the trunk latch. Phew. Two CEO. I don't know that we'll need it, but I'm gonna write it down anyway. Two five six. You look into the open trunk and see some whitish plastic packages containing what appears to be cocaine and a few green bags containing a leaf substance which you assume to be marijuana. You don't need to take the drugs out of the trunk, they will be impounded with the car. And that's about it, I think that was it, that's all you need to do. Leave the ugly pop culture icon alone, Bonds. Come on, Bonds, it wouldn't be Jake for a cop to be tearing down posters. You can get through that the armor anyway. You must be a Kitty Nicole, Nickelman fan, but please restrain yourself. That woman would rip you in half, Bonds. Don't even think about it. You pick into the dumpster and see things that will curb your appetite for the rest of your life. You definitely do not want to touch anything in there. You have better things to do. Leave the alley prowling to the Tomcats. There are some things you have no reason to touch. This is one of them. There's no reason to touch the street, Bonds. Now there's an unpleasant and unproductive maneuver. It's concrete. Mercedes don't feel much different than any other car bonds. Touching the bent bars, you see evidence that someone has recently tried to pry them open. You shake your head in disgust. You check and make sure the bars are securely locked into place. They are. <laughs> it's brick. That's about it. Top of the Sin City sign is home to pigeons and lots of bad karma. <laughs> so, save it here. Gotta click on the door. So now we're gonna go to the jail. Book this guy in. Pretty successful uh, felony stop there. Good cruising music. <laughs> well, I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I play this game so much over 30 years, practically. Damn near 30 years, not entirely. I just played it 
since I was a kid. Pretty much know all this stuff front and back. All the nooks and crannies and everything. Alright. This guy's truly bad news. He cut your throat in a second, which is probably only twice as fast as he cut his own mother's. Come on out of the car. Whoa, tough guy. You screw up once pickly weekly and I'll be all over you. I'm not that kind of guy, but thanks for the compliment. Shove it, ham hock. Okay, Hoffmeister, or whatever your name is today. Stand over there by the door and don't give me any trouble. Oh, yes, sir. Pardon me, sir. Right away, sir. <laughs> you ever hear the way a pig squeals when it's stuck? Or when it's been stuck? It's like music. Yeah. <laughs> You're funny. Alright, so we're gonna put the gun away. Remember to do that. Man, it's old school cars, man. Hit the buzzer. Okay, get inside. Stand against the wall and don't move. You're dead when I get out of this joint, cop. I'm quaking in my boots, sir. I'll be out of here in 15 minutes and I'm coming after you, so kiss your ass goodbye. The only ass I'm kissing goodbye is you. After all, I won't be seeing you for a few years. Don't bet on it, pig. Uh, about that. Comfortable? I'll be a lot more comfortable with a 22 slug buried in your temper. Temper. So, he made a threat. That would actually be another charge. But uh, we're going to save it right here. Alright, we're going to do the same thing. Oh, we got another winner. Tell him what he's won. Ooh, this one's lucky, Sonny. He gets a copy of your of our home game to play and enjoy right in his very own home. Ha! Alright, so, let's start with the vehicle codes again. Stolen vehicle, 19221. Stolen vehicle, eh? Some people will do anything to get out of car payments. So we're at 108, 109, okay. Uh, driver in, driver's license not in possession? We could do that. I don't know. But he did have driver's license in the... in the. Uh, he did have them in the glove box, but we, we can try it real quick. Uh, 19227. I don't think it's going to count, though. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do driving with a suspended license. We can try it. Again, I don't think it's going to count, though. 14304. Okay. Not that one either. Hit and run. He didn't do that, but we can try it. 16310. Yeah. I was just curious. All right, so stolen vehicle so far, and then failure to stop for a stop sign. We could try it, 13301. Failure to stop for the stop sign, definitely a hardened criminal. We're not going to get a point for that because we did it on the other one. <clears throat> and we'll try failure to stop it for a red light, 21490. Failure to stop at a red light. What's the matter, Bonds? Did he drive past your girlfriend's house without paying? Just kidding, sonny old pal. And we're not going to get another point for that either. Some of the same stuff he said before with the drunk. Driving too slow in the fast lane? No. Following too close? Eh, we could try it. I don't think it's going to be it, though. 22679. Yeah. Didn't think so. Uh, exceeding the, the maximum speed limit. 26504. That should be it. Exceeding the maximum speed limit. Another speed freak. No points for that one either because we've done it before. Reckless driving. We could do that one. 29211. Reckless driving, huh? Sounds like something you should get an award for. Get it? Reckless driving. Ha! No extra points again, but we can use that one. Uh, driving under the influence of intoxicants? No. Evading arrest? Eh, we could try that. 121068. Save it. Book him for evading arrest? Gee, that's strange. With our deluxe accommodations, why would anyone want to get away? So we're at 109, now 110, so that's good. Not in full control of faculties. I don't think that's going to count, but we can try it. 4472. Two nine. Yeah. Okay. 
so not that one. Okay, and then we're going to do penal codes. We got resisting arrest, 308. Um, I don't think that's it, though. Interesting. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. These are only three-digit codes, and that's not going to count. Resisting arrest, murder, attempted murder, kidnapping, armed robbery, assault, and battery. Assault and battery on a police officer, burglary. Those are all three-digit codes. But we got possession of a controlled substance, possession of cocaine, and possession of a concealed weapon. All three of those we can use on him, I believe. I don't know about controlled substance, but we'll try. 12876. Possession of a controlled substance, huh? Guess you didn't know when to say no. So it's 110 to 111. Possession of cocaine, 12755. Ah, oh, no. But what if we did that? What if we restore it? Is that what it is? Huh. Can't use cocaine at all, huh? I thought we could use that one. I thought I'd use it at some point. That's weird. One, two, eight. Seven, six. I thought he said something about sticking stuff up his nose. All right, we'll save that. One two seven five five. No, okay. Can't do the cocaine one. Even though it looked like there was cocaine in there, you can't do it. Uh, possession of a concealed weapon. One two five zero nine. He did have that on his person when Sonny searched him. Okay, one for possession of a concealed weapon. That's one eleven to one twelve, and that's it. So I'm gonna read them off to you real quick. You need these, the following. So, uh, sorry, we'll start with penal codes. Possession of a controlled substance, 12876. Possession of a concealed weapon, 12509. Oh, yeah, the cocaine is, is for another one, okay. So those are the two. Possession of controlled substance, 12876. Possession of concealed weapon, 12509. Those are the two you need from penal codes. And then vehicle codes you need, stolen vehicle, 19221. Uh, you need failure to stop. You can use it. You don't have to, I guess. But failure to stop at a, for a stop sign, 13301. Failure to stop for a red light, 21490. Uh, exceeding the maximum speed limit, 26504. Reckless driving, 29211. And evading arrest, 21068. Um, the other one... You could try is not in full control of faculties. I don't remember if that one worked or not. Let's save this. And that would be 44729. I, think I, already, I either already used it or it didn't work. So not in full control of faculties would be like if he's intoxicated or something. Or something else is going on. So you can try it, but I don't think it's going to work. So the ones I'm sure of, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, and eight. Evading arrest was the two one zero six eight. So eight of them. You're getting like eight charges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's pretty good. And just hit enter when you're done. Doors open, Sonny. Anytime. Please walk to the center of the room. Sonny, you ought to remove the guy's cuffs first. I'll take care of this. Don't you have some paperwork to do, Paul? <laughs> All right. Just have your baton ready just in case. You never know. You look good in matching bracelets. I got a match for you, pig man. Can it, punk? Move your cannon to the cell, Mr. Hoffman. I think you know the way. Hey, Sonny, I got the evidence booked on this guy. Oh, one more thing. Dooley wants to want you back at the station. He seems he's heavily perturbed about something, and he wants to talk to you about it ASAP. See you back there. 
Jack seems to be quite amused. Perhaps he just enjoys his own company. Dooley's always perturbed. Okay, so we've already read that, so we're going to head back out, go back to the station since Dooley's expecting us. Get our gun. And go back to the station. Don't forget to save it every so often. I don't know why he could just turn right and go straight up this way. He has to go left. Go see Sergeant Dooley. What's so important? Yeah. Yeah, I already did that. <clears throat> ah, Vaughn, so good of you to take a little time out of your busy schedule to drop by. Well, it looks like you got what you wanted. A memo just came fr down from Morgan's office. It says here... Oh crap, somebody makes this memo. Who thinks this kind of crud is funny? When I find out that Gremlin will be singing soprano. Here, you take it. Read it yourself. I hope you choke on it. As soon as you're done, put on your plain clothes and get to Morgan's office. I don't want to look at you anymore. Oh man, my whole head is leaking. Lieutenant Morgan to Sergeant Dooley regarding Officer Sonny Bonds. This is, the, this is to confirm the temporary transfer of Officer Sonny Bonds from the Traffic Division to the Narcotics Division. We feel that his assistance in the Death Angel case would be most invaluable. This transfer will remain in effect until further notice. I realize that this may inconvenience you, and I appreciate your cooperation. Thank you. You, you quickly put the memo back on the sergeant's desk. You grin inwardly. It's great to get some new responsibilities, and at the same time get out from under Dooley's thumb. You can hardly wait to get started. Alright. You consider giving your dogs a rest, then you'd rather... Then decide you'd rather not be sitting at this particular desk. Yeah. It's Sergeant Billy's chair. Okay. Cool. So that's the memo. He got what he wanted. He put it in for the transfer, and he's going to get out of the uniform. Key up here, put the radio up. Take a shower and change. Should be it. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna end the video right here. Oh uh, wait, I can't go. Man, you know what? There, I swear, there was something else you could you could go get another 
letter or something out of that that uh, pigeonhole. And I wonder if it's when you put in for a transfer request sooner. I don't know, but I just I seem to remember that that there was a second memo or something you got. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. We're gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna end the video up here before we go to Lieutenant Morgan's office. And uh, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you liked it. Give it a like if you did, a thumbs down if you didn't. Hopefully these are helping you if you're doing a walkthrough. And uh, we're at 112 of 225 on the score. So hopefully these, these are helpful to you and I hope you're enjoying them. And uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos, you want to be up to date and hit that bell icon. And uh, give the video a like if it did help you, though, for sure. And I will see you guys on the next one, all right? Take it easy.